So today we are going to do part three of our MMM series and we are going to look at some of the settings and how to extract data or rather metadata from one stream dimensions using MMM. So let's look at how to extract the data. If you have not watched the earlier videos, which is how you can use MMM to update the metadata using a file and a SQL, you can do that now. So the first series was about how to do it using a file. And the second series was about how to load the metadata using a SQL. So you can look at those videos and while we are gonna look at the extract metadata. So when you go to MMM, you can see a tab which says extract the metadata. Uh, you can, uh, again, like the other two tabs, you can pick a dimension and that's going to show you what all um, properties MMM can extract using the screen. Now, you will see that there is a very less amount of properties that you can extract. There is a reason behind that. Um, what I am doing with that is, um, it is, so if you look at account, it is gonna show you all the members or all the properties it can extract. However, depending on which type you are using, it is, if you are gonna use a parent child file, right now MMM cannot extract any varying member property because it doesn't make sense to put the varying member properties into a parent child because you are now going to get a multiple occurrences of the same parent and the child for all the different varying member properties that you have. So right now, the extract, if you are going to go for a parent child file, it's not going to give you the varying member property. The OS XML, that's going to get you all the properties, however, not the parent child. You can pick a dimension. Uh, so I'm going to say I'm going to use uh, measures and uh, you can also extract a hierarchy, uh, not the entire dimension. You just want to say, if I want a hierarchy to be extracted, you can do that. The moment you click on the hierarchy, it will now ask you to pick the account hierarchy. So you could just say, I just want only net income. And you can say whether you want the descendants or just the children. Um, so we were gonna look at both. And you also have an option to include or exclude the orphan members. We are gonna look at that as well. So right now, I'm gonna leave everything as default and then say, I just wanna extract everything under net income. Uh, you can click on extract dimension, that's going to complete the extract and then you can say download the XML file. When you download the XML file, depending on how your a default how your default app for an XML file is set up. It's either going to ask you to use a, a, an application to open it, or like in my case, I already have it set to a Notepad++, so it directly opens that in that editor. So if you look at it, it will give you the dimension type. It's going to give you everything. It's going to say the member is that, and it will give you all the member properties that uh, it is having. Um, so if it has any uh, varying member property, you will be able to see that. So I have all the members in there. Now, if you look at the relationship, you will see that only the members that are part of um, the parent, which is four, are extracted. So it is not going to extract the entire hierarchy. Uh, it's not going to extract the entire dimension. It's only going to extract that you said, I just want the descendants. So let's say that I just want the children. Uh, I can click on extract dimension again. And if you now download the XML, you will now see that it is only going to have those few members, just the three members, uh, four members in there. So if you look at measures, you will see that it just has those four members in the extract. So that is how you can use MMM to extract uh, a hierarchy. Uh, now let's see if we can make something an orphan member. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna remove the relationship. So now this is now going to become an orphan member in this hierarchy. Now, if you now do an extract of this uh, dimension, I'm gonna say extract since we are on the hierarchical um, 
uh, extract, it is not going to get you the uh, orphan members. However, if you now say, I want to extract the entire dimension, what's going to happen is you are now going to see all the members that are part of 9500. So if I search for 9500, you are going to get 9500 in there. However, there won't be a parent for 9500. And what's going to happen is that will now go ahead and get created as an orphan member again in another place if you are moving this. So that's where MMM has a feature where it says, I just want to exclude all the orphan members when I'm extracting the dimension. I could just say, use that exclude orphan members option. And now if you look for 9500, you are not going to see 9500 in that extract. So I could just say exclude the orphan members when I am extracting the dimension and then just go ahead and then use that in a different application if you have to. So that's how the uh, XML part works. And in parent child, these do not apply because parent child, you're not going to go ahead and then do it. So I can then select the member properties that are available. And as you can see, some of the member properties are not available um, for extracting extraction because of the way how the um, varying member property works. So you will not see, um, okay, maybe account is not a best idea. So let's say UD1, you are not going to see any text properties in there because that you cannot extract. So I can just say, these are the member properties that are available for extraction. So I could just say, allow input, uh, display member group, and uh, that's it. So that's that, I'm just gonna say that is a product. If I then extract the dimension, it's gonna do that. And if you now download the file, you are going to get the hierarchy as a parent child. So let's do the same thing for account. We are going to say account is measures. I want a parent child and you can pick what you want uh, for that. And I'm gonna say these are the properties that I need for account, which is that. And say exclude the um, orphan members. Say that is completed. And now we have all the members in there. Now if we say include the orphan members, and download the file and if you now search for 9500 that's going to be in there it is not going to have a parent so that's how the parent child file works when you do an extract dimension uh, when when you extract it the entire dimension you could say whether you want to include or exclude the orphan members uh, if you are just going to extract a hierarchy these doesn't matter because you are going against a hierarchy. It is not going to include the orphan members in there. But when you are extracting a dimension, you can choose that option to say, I don't want orphan. Now, parent child also lets you select the properties. Keep in mind the properties that are available right now are only the regular properties, not the time varying. Um, I am working on a version where you could extract the varying member properties and that will come in a different format. It's not going to be a parent child. It's going to be similar to the file that we were looking at earlier, the load file for varying member property, which will have the member name, the um, the scenario type, account uh, cube type, time, the property, and its value. That's how it's probably going to be. I don't know how it's going to be yet. Uh, I'm working on something uh, new. So that's hopefully going to come in a version soon. So that's how you can extract uh, metadata. Now let's look at some of the settings of MMM. Uh, you can, let's say that you did go ahead and add a new external connection in there after setting up MMM. You can refresh the connection by clicking on that button and the new external connection that you set up is going to show up in here. You can also export the profiles that you want. So let's say that I want to export uh, these two, um, the account SQL and the entity. I can select the uh, uh, the profiles that I want to export. 
uh, if you don't have the version which supports the multi-select uh, you can just uh, highlight the row that you want to export and then click on export so i'm going to do this one and this one click on export it is now going to download a csv file and that will uh, extract the details of that account so you can see that uh, in the account delete sql i get my sql statement and this was a file i just uh, keep the file delimiter and all that information for uh, those profiles so it brings the entire sql uh, in the um, csv so so this was the bigger sql that we executed so that has the entire sql in there so that's how you can export the profile if you just want to keep it with you that's an option uh, now you can also delete the profile so you can just select which one you want to delete so i'm just going to say i just want to delete the account delete sql i can just say delete the load profile and that will be gone now uh, uninstall is how you uninstall the uh, uh, mmm system so that's how you can uh, uninstall it now i did talk about uh, the automation part of mmm where you could use a powershell script to run an automation so we are going to look at our sql automation i'm just going to say this is what i want to uh, load and uh, i can just copy that put that into a uh, powershell so i am going to now uh, run a powershell script and then say this is what i have to automate so i can just going to go in there and write a powershell script so that's my powershell script i already have one stream studio installed in this machine so all i have to do is i'm just going to use a different one so that's one from file uh, but we are going to now change that and then say um, i just want to run this for the sql uh, one that i did so I'm going to upload or update my account hierarchy um, and um, I'm just going to paste that there. So what this one does is it uses, as I was saying, I have OneStream Studio installed on this machine. So I can just say add that path to the OneStream client API and I'm just initializing a new instance of the client API. I'm just going to log into the application using an encrypted password and I'm specifying a dictionary so that I can get the um, error messages if there is any error after running the uh, data management sequence. What happens is when you install MMM, it comes with a data management step that helps you with the automation. So I have a group which is metadata automation when you install MMM and there is a step in there which says execute metadata load and all we did was we used the command line argument that we got from our previous um, series of uh, using SQL and updating the metadata. So I'm just using that one and said this is how it is. So as you saw, I did remove the statistical accounts in my account dimension. So we are now going to use the PowerShell to update it. So let's run it. There we go. That's now done. The metadata load is completed. Now, if we go back and look at our hierarchy, we have our 9,500 back, uh, no orphan members, everything is good. So that's how you can automate the uh, metadata. And I could also do the same thing for the varying member properties. So you can go back and generate the SQL if you uh, want to um, grab the information. So I was, uh, so we did see the one that where we were using to uh, using to update the uh, account. Um, so we are now going to look at how to run that uh, same PowerShell to automate the varying member load. So all you have to do is run that. Uh, query so i just picked up that using my earlier profile and i just said okay i just need the um, command line argument so you can go ahead and generate it if you want I, i'm not going to execute the update properties i'm going to use a powershell to do the execution so all i did was go in went in there uh, picked up the profile that i want just ran the sql and i got the uh, member property so we are now going to put that into our um, PowerShell here, uh, all I said is, okay, that's the command line argument that I need. So it's the query member property. I said, this is what it is. 
I can now go ahead and then change one of the very member properties so that you know that it is running. So I'm gonna just say this is nothing but bean instead of whole bean. So I just said that is that. And let's uh, run our uh, PowerShell. So we are now gonna execute the PowerShell and then that says it is succeeded. Um, let's look at, look at the text property. As you can see, that gets updated with whole bean. So that is how you can use uh, MMM to do automations. The one difference between uh, SQL um, automation and uh, file automation is for a file, if you are using a file method, uh, what you will have to do is um, you will have to use uh, the file that you are going to use must be present on the server. So as you can see, now it got all the column mapping information. All the difference from the SQL load and the file load is you need to provide the file name in there for the update to take place. And the file must be on the server where the automation is running. So this is how it was done. I said this is the, uh, this is the option that we are trying to update. You could do the same thing using uh, the PowerShell. Uh, only difference is SQL. You don't have to have anything on the server that it's running. Uh, on a file, you need that because um, it is looking for the file on that server. So you can just run that and that information is now going to be uploaded and that's it. Uh, now, there is another option in MMM for automation. If you look at the help guide uh, in the automation section, uh, you will see that there is another option that MMM also um, allows you to do is um, load a pre-built one stream metadata file. So if you have something where you have the XML file already created for one stream, you could still use MMM to perform that automation. So that is listed here. Uh, you just need to mention what exactly the file name is. And if the file is on a different server, you can do that as well. So you could just say, this is a file uh, and where if it is not present in MMM, you could just mention that in there and then it's gonna read that file name uh, and then uh, grab that. So this needs to be accessible, the file that you have on a different system. Uh, the PowerShell must be able to access that file and all you have to do is the PowerShell will read the contents of it and then update it here. Now you can also do that using an internal uh, OS server. So let's say that the file is on the OS server you have a different option to do it. So that's already outlined how to do that uh, is already there in the uh, help guide. So you can look at that and then perform the automation. And that concludes our adventure with MMM. Uh, we did see how you can update the metadata using a file and a SQL server. We did look at how you can extract the dimension as a parent-child file, extract a hierarchy as a parent-child file. And that concludes our MMM series. Thank you.